So I've got a different stove I'm going to show you today. This one is made from furnace ducting, the type you would find at Home Depot. Uh, it's a uh, galvanized material, fairly thin, uh, but it's all pre-bent. Uh, these are called end caps. And uh, there's kind of what they, what they look like. They come in different sizes, and they're pre-bent to this shape. So it kind of makes them uh, convenient to, to put together. Uh, without doing a lot of bending or cutting. So so this stove uh, I made from uh, four, uh, they're all eight inches high by different lengths. So these are 14 inches long. Uh, so uh, the four sides are all 14 inches long. Then I bought uh, two other uh, caps, which I, I did cut down just using a pair of tin snips uh, for the ends and uh, and another one for the door. And that one, I, I just left uh, a couple of the of the edges on it so that it would be a little sturdier. And this door actually fits uh, fairly airtight. Uh, so there are a few little gaps uh, in the in the corners, but but it works fairly well. The legs are made from uh, strapping. You can buy that in the same furnace uh, section. It's just meant for. Uh, going across the floor joists and I think they are 16 inches long and I just did a, a simple bend on the bottom of those to to form a leg. Uh, I put this together with rivets. Uh, there are basically the tools that I used, uh, tin snips, uh, drill, a couple of bits and my pop riveter. These pop rivets are made from aluminum uh, and to be honest I'm kind of surprised they haven't melted. I think the melting point of aluminum uh, technically is less than uh, what the stove would generate uh, somewhere I think the stove uh, you know wood fire somewhere a thousand to fifteen hundred degrees uh, Celsius and those pop rivets uh, technically should melt before then um, but they may be made from some kind of an aluminum alloy because uh, I've used these as you've seen in my various stoves uh, to hold the hinges on and and none of them have popped So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I you know, I've been waiting for them to go, but uh, they're holding together So I, I just to put something together quick. I used the rivets uh, My thinking was if they they actually popped in the heat well, I could just change them out with regular hardware, but this this is kind of quick and easy to get going. So yeah, they seem to be working um so that's a, another stove. I have burn tested this one. Um, I, I put a couple of air holes in these holes here just so the hinges uh, sit flush uh, or the door sits flush. Um, uh, these holes I had in here uh, from a, a larger or smaller door that I had on there. I was thinking I needed some air, but just the fact that the, the door doesn't sit perfectly tight and there's a few holes in the corners uh, there's enough airflow to keep that going. In the bottom, uh, I just put some chicken wire to keep the uh, the the wood and the fire uh, kind of off the bottom to give it a little bit of airflow underneath. Uh, so when I do crack the door, I got those couple little holes down there that um, provide ample airflow. So uh, cut out for a standard three inch chimney piping on the top, and uh, and that works uh, quite well. I know there's uh, some controversy over using the, the galvanized. Uh, and all the research that I've done uh, suggests that um, while you can get zinc oxide vapor uh, from galvanized if you cut it or weld it, uh, but not if you burn it. This, this white coating here is actually the zinc oxide. It doesn't give off fumes when it turns uh, from uh, the, the bright color to the dull finish but if you were to in fact burn this weld it cut it uh, the the zinc oxide uh, at this point um, could give off some fumes but zinc oxide doesn't actually melt until well over 2000 degrees I think 2200 degrees Celsius so there is no danger uh, that you're going to be actually burning this zinc oxide because its melting point is much higher than this stove will ever go. Uh, so if you've got a buddy that's a welder says, no, no, you shouldn't be using zinc, 
uh, or galvanized because of the zinc fumes. Um, you can explain to him that we're not burning the zinc oxide uh, like he does when he's welding or cutting. Uh, we're just taking the zinc and and oxidizing it here. And this uh, zinc oxide here is is non-toxic. They actually use it in, in a lot of uh, creams for uh, diaper rash and things like that. So it's so it's non-toxic. So you don't need to worry about uh, the zinc oxide itself until uh, it starts to fume, which is well over 2,000 degrees Celsius. So so no concerns there. I got another uh, little clip uh, of this uh, stove on a burn test. So we'll splice that on the end here and uh, you'll get an idea of, of what we're doing. So today I thought I'd do a quick burn test on this uh, stove that we put together from uh, furnace ducting and I've just thrown a few twigs in there and I'm going to try and spark it up here. It's got a little bit of, a little bit of paper not going to be too much of a bushcraft video, just wanted to show you how this thing burns. I have tried it previously and uh, and it actually worked pretty well. So we'll see if we can just kind of stoke this up a little bit here. Pretty unscientific test, but uh, nonetheless, we'll see if we can get a little bit of a fire going in it today here. November day, a little bit of snow falling, temperatures, oh, I don't know, about minus 5 Celsius, something like that. So, uh, all in all, not a, not a bad day to test a little homemade stove. So, as I mentioned before, I got the wood just uh, off the floor of the stove on uh, a little bit of chicken wire basically and uh, I think that is going to allow it to uh, get some draft from underneath without sitting right on the bottom of the stove hopefully extend the life of the stove a little bit because it's not burning right on the on the on the floor and a couple of little air holes down on the bottom and I think that uh, is just giving it enough airflow from underneath uh, to, to get it going. I'm glad I add a little more fuel to that, so I'm going to pause it again. Alright, so I got a couple of bigger pieces in there and uh, as long as that door is open, this, this stove just wants to take right off. Uh, but it's kind of nice, everything's self-contained, has a good amount of heat radiating uh, from all sides of the stove. And uh, I think a little bit of, a little bit of wood is going to go a long way. So I really haven't got much in the way of coals uh, burning yet, but the fire is pretty hot. I'll just back out here a little bit and show you the top of the chimney. And uh, really nothing coming out of the way, uh, out of the top of there in the way of uh, soot or black smoke. I think it's burning pretty cleanly with all that fire going anyway. So let's just close that door up and uh, give it a couple seconds and uh, see what happens, see if that's going to damp down a little bit, extend our fuel. Alright, just going to give that a, a minute or two and we'll come back and check it out. Alright, so it's been about five minutes. Now I'll just open the door and take a peek inside. Uh, these little tabs here are actually still cool to the touch, which is nice. You can open that up. As you can see, it kind of 
Uh, damped it down a little bit, but still a good amount of fire burning in there. And as soon as you open the door up, yeah, it's going to spark right up again. Uh, that little piece of log there is about two inches in diameter. Uh, and it's still burning nicely. The rest of the twigs have kind of died down to coals, but uh, be interesting to see what happens. I think I might put another couple little pieces on there and then come back in an hour and see what it looks like. Well, we're back after half an hour to check on our project here. Uh, burn test of the galvanized stove. First thing I notice is the melting snow that's around there. It's been giving off a little bit of heat. It's kind of an interesting melt pattern. But uh, let's just take a look inside and we'll, we'll see what's still going on in here. All right, not much in the way of fire, uh, but we do have some smoldering coals. Just blow on that a little bit. That uh, kind of comes back to life pretty quick. I think if I threw another log on there, that would probably spark up pretty quick. So uh, half an hour burn time, two inch log. Uh, not a lot of fuel uh, used. Uh, threw off a little bit of heat, probably enough to keep you from freezing on a cold winter's night in the backcountry. Overall, I would say that that test is a success. Uh, for today, that's about all we're going to do. Just wanted to give it a burn and uh, see how it went. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll uh, catch up with you next time.